Hey everyone, welcome back once again to Science in 10. Next up in our introduction to the various types of rocks, how they form, and their textures are sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are quite important geologically as they contain a record of environments, climate, and biologic life at the Earth's surface throughout the geologic past. In fact, much of the Earth's history we know from studying sedimentary rocks. In general, sedimentary rocks form when pre-existing rocks at the Earth's surface break down into smaller pieces, also known as sediment. This sediment then gets transported to a different location and deposited, and over time, this sediment becomes buried, compacted, and cemented into a rock. Let's break this process down into a bit more detail, beginning with the breakdown of an existing rock. Whenever rocks are at or near the Earth's surface, they're exposed to the atmosphere and other processes or elements. Things like rain, wind, extreme changes in temperature, pounding by ocean waves, biologic activity, etc. can all start acting on a rock. The end result? These processes turn big rocks into little rocks. We call this whole suite of processes that break down rocks weathering because many of the individual processes involve exposure to weather. Weathering can be broken down into two main categories. Physical weathering, where rocks are broken into smaller pieces by physical processes, and chemical weathering, where chemical reactions either alter the composition of a rock or slowly dissolve away at an exposed surface. The products of weathering processes are what eventually become sedimentary rocks. Physical weathering produces smaller pieces that are compositionally identical to the parent rock. These individual pieces, often called particles, grains, clasts, or clastic sediment, can be classified according to their size and shape. Clast size ranges from microscopic clay all the way up through boulders. Clay particles are two thousandths of a millimeter in diameter and smaller. Silt is between clay and 0.0625 millimeters in size. Sand is between silt and two millimeters in diameter. Pebbles are between two and 64 millimeters across. Cobbles range from 64 to 256 millimeters in size and boulders are individual clasts that are greater than 256 millimeters across. Class shape refers to how rounded the individual pieces of sediment are. Angular clasts have lots of flat surfaces and sharp edges, and this grades towards well-rounded clasts that are very smooth, almost spherical in shape. When we're dealing with a group or collection of all sorts of different pieces of sediment, we can classify the range of grain sizes by how well sorted the sediments are. Very well sorted sediments have all the individual pieces of approximately the same size, and this ranges all the way to very poorly sorted sediments that have a huge range of grain sizes present within one sample. Let's go back to chemical weathering for a second. This type of weathering, on the other hand, produces products that are quite different than those created by physical weathering. Since chemical weathering involves some sort of chemical change to the original rock, the products are not identical to the original rock. Chemical weathering processes can produce new minerals or dissolve rocks to produce ions in an aqueous solution. Once any type of sediment is produced, it is then transported, again by mechanisms such as running water, glaciers, wind, and gravity. Following transport, the sediment then reaches a depositional environment, locations on the Earth's surface where the products of physical or chemical weathering can accumulate over time. Locations where clastic sediments accumulate are often associated with rivers, lakes, glaciers, deserts, beaches, and shallow to deep marine environments. Sediments that accumulate in each of these different depositional environments will record the energy and processes that both transported and deposited that particular sediment. For example, sediment transported and deposited by rivers is often rounded in shape as the transport involves the rolling and bouncing of individual grains within a river channel. Steeper rivers with a high current speed will transport larger clasts, and as the river's slope decreases, these larger class will be deposited, leaving slow, meandering rivers with mostly sand-sized and smaller sediment. Beaches and deserts tend to accumulate lots of sand, 
transported there by rivers or by wind. Because of the high degree of transport, these sands are often well sorted and the individual grains well rounded. Small sediments, sand sized and smaller, can be transported into marine or oceanic environments and slowly settle out onto the ocean floor. To describe where products of chemical weathering end up, we need to use slightly different terminology and examples. Rocks and minerals dissolved in solution will precipitate out via different methods, by evaporation, inorganic processes, or biologic processes. For example, shallow lakes that form during the rainy season in Death Valley evaporate away, leaving behind any salts or other minerals on the valley floor. Some aquatic organisms use dissolved calcium and silica in seawater to form shells or their skeletal structures. These shells, shell fragments, and microscopic structures will often end up on the ocean floor. Over time, as sediments accumulate in these differing depositional environments, the deposits of sediment will get thicker and thicker and thicker, compacting and cementing the sediments at the bottom of the pile. This process of lithification, or becoming a rock, forms sedimentary rocks. Similar to igneous rocks, we can define and classify sedimentary rocks according to their texture, though we need to have a slightly different definition of texture in this case. We'll still generally say that texture is the size and arrangement of the individual pieces that compose the rock, but unlike igneous rocks, these individual pieces will be the clasts or precipitated minerals making up the rock. Sedimentary rocks can be divided into two main categories, clastic, being composed of other rock fragments cemented together, and chemical or biologic, being composed of minerals precipitated by chemical or biologic processes. Clastic sedimentary rocks are classified by the size of the class composing the rock, their shape, and their sorting. Rocks made of clay-sized particles cemented together into thin laminations are shales or mudstones. Rocks composed of silt-sized particles are creatively named siltstones. Well-sorted grains of sand all cemented together form, you guessed it, sandstone. Poorly sorted, rounded clasts cemented together form a conglomerate. And a rock composed of poorly sorted, angular clasts is a breccia. Chemical or biologic sedimentary rocks are classified by two main criteria, the main mineral constituent of the rock, and whether the rock is crystalline or composed of biologic fragments. If the main mineral component is calcite, then the rock could be the following. Plain old limestone if the rock is crystalline. Could also be travertine if the calcite precipitated from groundwater or from a hot spring. Fossiliferous limestone if the rock contains a noticeable amount of shell or fossil fragments. Coquina if the rock is all shells. This kind of rock kind of looks like granola, but definitely don't eat it. Chalk if the rock is soft, clay-sized limestone particles and microscopic shell fragments. And if there's a little bit of magnesium carbonate in the rock as well, this would be a dolostone or a dolomite. If the main mineral component is quartz or silica in crystalline form, hint, the rock will scratch glass. Then the rock is named chert, flint, jasper, or agate. Rock gypsum is entirely crystalline gypsum precipitated from solution, primarily by evaporation. And rock salt is halite precipitated by evaporation. Finally, varying types of coal are all composed of altered plant or peat fragments. And there's our introduction to sediments and sedimentary rocks. Next, we will finish up our look at the rock cycle and dive deeper into some of the insanely cool processes that change or metamorphose rocks. Until then.